Welcome back to Blue Zone Homestead. Just washed my hair. It's quite early still. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. So excuse my hair. And I've just made myself a cup of coffee. And I'm going to put some goat's milk to my coffee. And that keeps me going. At the same time, I'm going to make a sourdough bread. I've made this dough yesterday, chilled overnight in a fridge and now it's ready for the next step what is to bake it. I've got my cast iron with the lid on. I'll actually show you. I'll show you in a sec when we put it in where I bake it so it's already preheating in my roasting oven and I'm just using this cookie sheet to turn this out of my banneton basket. I usually just put this on the auger until it, you know, dries out nicely. And we're going to score the bread. I'm going with an easy score and I usually do this anyways. Just go like this for deep cut and I might just do just a, like a little bit around it and I'm going to bake this it's hard to say because of my agar so I am not 100% sure of the temperature of my agar but the roasting oven is quite high so it's done so I probably, I usually put with the lid on for about 40 minutes and maybe without the lid another 10. Sometimes it's done, sometimes I don't have to. So it's hard to tell you these kind of uh, instructions, sorry. So what I do now, I take it out. At this point now it's nice and hot. Bread in there, I can go back to the oven. Very hot, so make sure I use oven gloves. Put the lid back on, and back it goes. What I also made yesterday, I made this yogurt. I haven't got, actually, I have got a yogurt maker, a small one, but I've just ordered an instant. Pot. So hopefully we can make yogurt in an instant pot. So I'll show you closer. Not sure how well you can see it. This is the yogurt I've made yesterday. I've just put the alarm on for 40 minutes, the alarm will go off. Let's check this yogurt. Mm, That's looking good. You see? Let's have a taste test. It is quite thick. And we're going to put this in it. The reason I keep this by my auger, because you're supposed to have a consistent temperatures to the yogurt to set. This is amazing. I've made this with Greek yogurt from with live cultures from the shop because I haven't made yogurt for a while. Now, from now on, I can just leave a cup behind and I can just keep going weekly to make my own yogurt with my own starter culture. This is delicious as it is on its own. You can pour this over whatever you have, you know, granola, oat, fruit, put honey over it, cinnamon, nuts, whatever you want. I like to flavor ours with my gems, what I make. So all sorts of gems, you know, grape, gooseberry, strawberry, raspberry, mixed berry, loganberry, whatever berry. <laughs> I usually make all sorts. Rose hip is one of my favorite. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to put this to the fridge to cool down and get even thicker and then when we're ready to eat. I'm just gonna mix together with some jam and it's ready to go. 
What I usually do every day when I make fresh cheese, because it's still sweat and this kitchen towel is still wet, put this in a compost bin. So I dress it with a fresh one and I turn it. So this was up, now this is gonna be in the bottom like this. I'm gonna keep it out in a counter, cover it up with like this and put it aside. coffee. So I need to write down, this is my garden diary, so I'll write down anything what I think is important when I sow seeds, potting on, harvest, you know, things like that. So the 18th of April we've sown, I need to write down, I usually like to write down what I sow what was the variety, if I know where did it come from as well. So the sweet corn, I, it's 24th of April today and we've sown all these seeds the 18th. So I need to write down, but I still didn't buy a proper sweet corn, like Swift or Incredible, I would love to buy and I really need to start doing those. But we did, I did buy sweet corn, glass jam, and then got some flint corn from home saved seed from previous years. I don't think so, I've done last year, so it must be year before. We've also sown the courgette, pumpkin, cucumber, gherkins and the winter squash. And also all the different varieties of beans, butter beans, haricot, French beans, climbing beans, runner beans, you know. So, oh, you know what we haven't? Bolotti beans. I just remembered. I need to sow the bolotti beans today. So, and I want to show you in a minute for how they're getting on. So since 18th, it's about five, six days now, let's see what's up. But before we go there, I'm going to write it down, what we've sown and all the varieties. Okay, so while we talk about the beans and the squash, and we've only sown them just this week, so the 18th of April, uh, they usually, I preserve the beans with different methods, so I usually leave them to dry out and I put them in these beautiful glass jars and they just last perfect for me. The downside to this that can affect it with some little bugs, so we really don't want to happen that. What I usually do with mine, I freeze mine. After they dry, I freeze it leave it out again to dry and then I store it. You can also freeze it and leave it in a freezer and I also preserve mine another way like pressure can then. Regarding to be on the safe side with beans, either green beans or dried beans, you have to pressure can and we're going to do loads of pressure canning this year, so I'm more than happy to show you the way I do them. With green beans, I freeze dry them. So you can freeze it, freeze dry it, and can it. With green beans, you know, pole beans, French beans, climbing beans, comes with different colors. I like to grow different varieties yellow, green, purple. And I pressure can them again, or freeze dry them, or freeze them. So, it's, when it comes up to self-sufficiency, beans are such a must, you know, it's absolutely amazing. And then all the varieties you can grow, it's fantastic. So I do grow loads of varieties of beans, butter beans, it's one of my favorite, it's absolutely huge white beans and if I mush it, it's like, call it like a mashed potato beans. And the runner beans of your uh, box standard runner beans, you can eat it as a green pod or you can wait until it dries and it's amazing in stews. The green beans, what we eat, uh, I usually, some of them I leave it to dry 
and use it up in soups. I do mix them up like that sometimes, it just looks nice in a bottle. But what I would like to do, what I forgot to sew, the bolotti beans. Bolotti beans is one of my favorites from my childhood, when my mum made it, I call it white soup. So it's basically beans, potatoes, you know, a few more ingredients, onions, garlic, and we put cream and milk over the top. It's just delicious with some crusted sourdough bread. Now I think this is going to be enough. So all these beans I grew last year, so we've still got all these to go through the upcoming months. What is amazing. Another thing I think I would like to talk about, squash and courgette. You know, courgette, it's amazing, but it's like a fresh vegetable crop. So as it crops, you eat it. You can preserve it, don't take me wrong, I did freeze dry, you can can freeze again. But if you need an easy option as storage, like we store potatoes, the winter squash is amazing. This winter squash in here, the crown prince, it tastes divine, absolutely delicious, sweet. And it look, I've still got in my storage. So we've harvested this October time, so, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, seven months in storage and this crown prince, it's still good, but we really need to use it up. Same goes with the blue banana. So we are grown again, crown prince and blue banana. So we go through the same process. So we've sown the seeds in 18th of, 18th of April and probably we're gonna plant them out probably in June time. I like to wait till the end of May frost dates to be over. So in June, the sweet corn and the squash and courgette cucumbers, gherkins can go out because the guaranteed frost-free months in my climate in the UK, where I am in England, it's three months. June, July, August, the summer months. I'm not sure we can't have it longer. I did have six, seven months, but it's not guaranteed. I did have frost right at the end of May. I can have, it's happened several times. My last frost and the first frost could be, I did have September, end of September, October, it's easy. So our growing season, it's fairly short in my climate, but again, it's possible. I grow all our own vegetables. I don't shop in a supermarket. So, and I do eat what's in the season, you know, what's in the season or what's in the storage. And this is just the perfect example to show you when you have this blue zone lifestyle, I like to call my homestead, that you can still have all this lovely nutritional food without going to the supermarket and buying these things. So let's go have a look if the baby plants are up yet. These are the sweet potatoes, what we potted up yesterday. We've got three there and one little one over here look just that's where i store the blue banana winter squash and let me show you this nice foliage they put up my i'm not sure what variety this is it looks like a mandarin but tastes like lemon they do it does so well for me and already we have some we had some flowers so they set these little baby all over the place. They are new new ones coming. Right, let's see the beans and the squash. So the first ones were up the gherkins and the cucumbers. And that's the cucumbers. And the corn. We're up next. So we sow these all within a week. So we've got the sweet corn and the flint corn. they all up. And here, just came up yesterday, all the beans and the squash. The crown prince we've just talked about, I've just showed you. That's the crown prince, the two in the end. That's the courgette. That's the blue banana I just showed you. These are the climbing beans, cobra, 
and that's the my mum's beans. What I've made to make a soup with, and that's the pink banana winter squash. And now I'm just seeing other things are popping up. So that's how I uh, they are in this heated propagator with the lid on, and as soon they up, I'll they off the heat and off the lid. So what's next thing from here? Beans, some more beans. Runner beans are coming up now. Yeah, the runner beans. So that's a haricot bean is not up yet. Butternut squash home safe seed is not up yet. Pumpkin is not up yet. Some more runner beans, it's not up yet. But yeah, some more beans, butter beans, runner beans. But they will be up soon. It's half past seven in the morning. Let's go and turn the greenhouse heater off. It wasn't frost this morning. So that's amazing. But tonight is the one what we need to watch. So I'm gonna uncover everything today and I'm gonna cover everything tonight. But yeah, let's go. Oh, welcome. So it's been, it's very cozy. It's 18 degrees Celsius in here at the moment. It's gone up 32 degrees, that was probably yesterday, daytime, and the lowest was tonight, last night, early this morning, 13.7, nearly 14 degrees. So this is, these are just the numbers, so you know if you garden in Fahrenheit. And this is my greenhouse heater, and I am turning this off now. That's it. And everything is looking amazing. Shriveled leaves, aphids, aphids are here, aphids loving the zinnia. Most of them are looking, oh look what I've noticed, the facilia, it's now in flower. The bees absolutely love it. I think some of them are a little dry, I'll water this. And I think we're going to harvest some radishes in a minute and some lettuces. Yeah, everything looking amazing. In my other greenhouse. It's so cozy and warm in here. Let's see how did we oh, manage to maintain 15 degrees Celsius, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, the coldest. Let's clear it. So it's 23 degrees Celsius in here right now. Turn the heater off. And all these plants are loving this lovely heat. Yeah. Very, very, very happy. Okay. When we move to this property, seven years ago this all was just a overgrown jungle and over the years it became for us I call this a pine, pine tree area so I've got two pine tree area when I talk about plant this plant something out to the pine tree area it's that's where I mean we plant them so now we've got all these beautiful perennial flowers coming back and then we've got Elderberries, they absolutely love the shade of the pine trees. And over here, this was the elderberry I've harvested last year. This one is doing really well. And it's now set flowers, so it's not long. We're gonna harvest this again, making our beautiful elderflower cordial and then elderberry syrup and this is the other pine tree area I've been working on lately what you know probably more about if you just joined my channel so I dumped all these remember lemon balm garlic 
over here. They are doing brilliant. Planted all the garlic all along. We've sown so many seeds and they are now popping up. So I'm just, I'm really curious what it's gonna. This was a dumping station, honestly. This was so neglected when we moved here. And I would like to create this as a food forest where we can come and just pick some things they need or just look nice and have the insects for all the bees to enjoy. I always keep repeating myself how I love this way of living, how passionate I am about self-sufficiency and learn all these skills what are parents, grandparents, great-grandparents lived or live still. I was growing up being self-sufficient since I was a little girl. That's what I remember. That, uh, you know, my biggest inspiration is my grandma who engraved me in this lifestyle. I'm getting emotional because I've lost her last year. But I know, she's always here with me. Sorry. That's the asparagus bed. I'm hoping every day when I come out for a better harvest, but I think the slugs munching away and they shriveling up. All this was the frost damage and the slugs. And look at who is coming to eat. My next yummy bun, this slug. Yeah, so I come out every day and I'm seeing like, oh wow, it's loads coming up and <laughs> coming the next day and they are just gone. So we're not having lots of asparagus to be honest, but I know why now. And I come out nice and early and I can see who's having breakfast on them. Look at this. I'm glad you enjoy it, mate. Look, they'll totally demolish it. Totally demolish it. Oh dear. Let's see. I did have lots of carrots coming up and they are gone. Hmm. I think I should have, uh, I should have, I don't know, covered it, but Maybe the slugs again, 100%, look, 100% the slugs had the baby carrot, because it's nothing. Beetroot, you're not so keen on, although they munching on it, look. Wow, parsnip is not up yet. I still need to sow some more carrots and parsnip. Horseradish is now coming up, look. Very soon it's going to overtake my rhubarb, so make sure I do a few more pickings from it before we lose it. And that's the strawberry. So I can uncover this now. I've got my garden in body with me. There you go. Oops. We've not had frost. I left my phone in a house, so make sure I don't hang around too long, because I need to take that bread out. But I just want to uncover this to show you how beautiful the strawberry is now, full of flowers. And to be honest, tonight, it's tonight what I really need to watch. Because, look, that would give us such a beautiful strawberry harvest now. They are full, absolutely full in flower mode. I will come back later and uncover all these. Just sort of showing around. All the birds are on up. Morning, Juniper! She's waiting now to get milked. So I'm gonna go and do, do the animals, feed them, and then we can plan today. Oh, 
Time is gone off, let's have a look at the bread. It's been 40 minutes so far. Let's see what our bread looks like. Oh, looking amazing. A homemade sourdough bread. Look at this, guys, how beautiful this looks. Oh, it smells gorgeous. So at this stage now, it's looking fairly done. For me. Now, I think, just check the bottom. I think it's good. I think it's good, friends. Look how beautiful this is. So what I'm doing now, I'm gonna rest this in here to cool down before we're going to open this up. It looks amazing, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's very, very hot. So it needs, I usually leave it about an hour before we, you know, try them, but that's definitely going to have this for breakfast. Let's go pick some radishes and lettuces. Oh, looking good. Okay, let's pick some radishes and then I'm going to turn the water on. So I try to take one out where it's due, so I give a chance to the other one to grow even larger. This is, this is now really, really nice. Such a lovely fresh spring taste. Okay. Got some more over here. Some almost here next. Nostertium is looking amazing. Okay, let's take out of here. It's actually not too bad, it's not too too dry. Slugs on it, can you see that baby tiny minus slug? It's munching on it, but it's not too bad to be honest. I think we've got plenty for now. Try to drink that much compost as possible of it. Perfect. Look at this beautiful basket of radish. Okay. I've got radish in these spots as a little experiment. It is looking good. But I would like to harvest absolutely lovely crunchy lettuce. They're so sweet and delicious. I like to harvest them this early. It's so crunchy and yummy. And we pick some all the varieties a bit. Make yummy breakfast. Some extra virgin olive oil, a pinch of salt. Amazing. I like to put sweet chili sauce because I love sweet chili. Sometimes a bit of homemade mayonnaise and a bit of fried egg or scrambled egg or omelette. It goes perfect. Beautiful, it's variegated leafies. It's all the only in these tiny cells. 
Let me just show you. They're still in these tiny little cells. They really need to actually go somewhere. They would do so much better now. With more space. So what I could do actually, to plant them out, because I've got nothing at the annex greenhouse at the moment. And maybe put some outside. My only problem is outside. The pigeons and the birds. They'll probably just demolish it in a few days. And we really need to plant out. We have actually we need to have a planting day next. So that's what we're gonna do. Well I hope you enjoyed spending time with me this morning. And the next time we gonna go to the garden. We need to plant out these lettuces, some more the peas, all the different varieties of peas. And uh, probably some plants, some flowers as well. But look our beautiful harvest. So I'm gonna go in now, I'm gonna make breakfast and hopefully see you very soon. Bye friends. I'm ready to cut into this bread what we've just made this morning let's see Smelling delicious. Let's have a taste test. So good. Mm. The radish and the lettuce we've just picked this morning made a beautiful side salad for our breakfast. So we've got a bit of that mandarin juice sweet chili sauce, salt and extra virgin olive oil and this looks delicious. I'm making scrambled eggs, put a little bit of lard in a frying pan and I try to a little bit rehydrate. I've got freeze-dried tomatoes in here and peppers from last year's garden. I rehydrated that in the egg and got a pinch of salt onion powder and that's it and this is now nearly done I'm toasting the sourdough bread on both sides I'm going to dish up so I'm gonna put the goat's cheese on top and these lovely scrambled eggs on top of the bread. And this is going to be a hearty breakfast for us. Wow, look at, look at the colours. Look at these beautiful colours. Oops, nearly lost it then. <laughs> Enjoy!